Welcome to my humble little office. My name is R. Keith Andrews. I'm a spiritual guide and paranormal adept. The journey continues today on September 10th, 2021 at approximately 1.14 p.m. PST. Well, guess it's time to get underway. Now, as I've mentioned before, a lot of false starts, if you will, a lot of redundancy. I understand that all too well. So, here's the way this works. We're going to try this from a slightly different angle. I was talking about a storyline and it dawned on me, why not work with a, with a live storyline, as it were. In other words, why not start off with showing you how to change your life right now? The first thing we got to understand, okay, well, a couple of things. First of all, before we get into it, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, okay, and remember to hit the little alert button to the right of the, of the subscribe button. That'll let you know when the next video comes out. Now, yesterday, I messed up. Yesterday, I got the video done and everything, got it all sorted around, and something sidetracked me, and as you found out this morning, at least I think you found out this morning, I forgot to post it on everything else because I got completely sidetracked. Okay, something hit me really left to center, which created some complications. I'm dealing with them, and rest assured, physically speaking, they were certainly not a health issue. Okay, so we start with this. Okay, where I'm sitting right here, right now, you're in exactly the same place. Well, not quite. Every one of us, regardless of what your income, your background, your political alignment, you know, it doesn't matter what the minor differences are. You're all exactly in the same place, right here, right now. And this is the only point in time when you can actually modify anything in your life. Even if you postpone doing it until tomorrow, or for that matter, five minutes. When you actually do it, you're right here, right now. Okay, nobody is any better than the next person. The thing is, we are focusing so much on what other people are responsible for. I'm going to simply look in and back this up a fraction. And we're going to look at this as to what are you responsible for. In my case, I'm responsible not for what you do, not for what anybody says. I am simply responsible for my own choices, my own actions. Okay, now the thing is, you may not agree with the things I have to, that I point out. You may not even like them, and that's okay because I'm certain I'm going to I'm going to upset some people along the way. I remember one day a, a number of months back, I had posted something that suggested we get along, and I immediately got told I was I was a problem because I was the type of person that was starting these cults. Well, I will tell you this, if getting people to get along is the idea of starting a cult, you know, if suggesting people put their differences aside and look at their similarities, if that is starting a cult, then absolutely, let's start a cult. It's kind of like if telling people to smile at somebody is going to start a pandemic. Absolutely. Let's start a pandemic of smiles. Okay, I'm all for it. Because the fact of the matter is, if we can work together, when we choose to work together, when we choose to focus on the similarities between people, okay, that is when this world starts to change for the better. Until then, we have some other problems. Some pretty severe ones, in all fairness. Now, the way society works is this, in a nutshell. Now understand, I am not educated in the traditional sense of the word. I didn't go and graduate from college with some sort of a, you know, sociology degree, or degree in political science, or for that matter, a degree in anything. Okay, I actually took a course, I did take my business administration course, and in that, in that journey, I did discover it didn't work for me because I failed that course miserably. On the plus side, I got reasonably good at ping pong in the last semester. Spent two years in college and came out with a really good backhand 
where it came to ping pong. Now, I'm thinking this was a little pricey to get ping pong, but that, that was my choice. Okay. So what we have to look at is you have a responsibility to you. Now, karmic law is pretty simple. Be true to yourself first. Okay. Now, I've got my own belief structures. I've got my own way of looking at things. And rest assured, some of them, compared to what some people are used to hearing, are a little radical, a little left of center. Okay. But the big one is this. I look at three laws. Be true to yourself first. Do unto others as you desire them to do unto you. Energy out, energy in. Now, if you look at your own guidelines, okay, those three are karmic laws are the only three I pay attention to. But if you look at every one of your of the laws of the guidelines that you live by, compare them to those three. And ask yourself, do your guidelines fit inside those three? If you've got one that does not, absolutely drop me a line in the comments below or drop me a line at one of the at one of the more personalized, more private, if you will, contact points in the list below. Because I would love to hear about it. At this point, after going through multiple 12-step programs, multiple religions, multiple spiritual belief structures from multiple races and nationalities, I have yet to find a single law, a single guideline that does not fit inside those three. Okay, so that's why I follow them. Now again, I'm not telling you, I'm not suggesting you just take my word for it. These are just the laws I live by. The tools I offer are the same ones I personally put to use. Okay. Now, I've long mentioned, if you're going to do something, talk to somebody that has successfully done it. Okay. Now, that's where I'm starting. Okay. It's the same place you're going to end up starting. Because the only person, on the, the only entity in existence that can be successful for you is you. And yes, for those of you that want to go there, that includes whoever you call God. Because whoever you're calling God or whoever you're worshipping is a superior being. Okay. Everything I've learned from everybody has said the same thing. They all gave people irrevocable freedom of choice. Free will. And with that in mind, Okay, with that in mind, even they cannot alter your alter your path. That is your choice and your choice only, and thereby you are responsible for your choices. Now we rein that in. We go just a little wider, and we have this issue. If you take a look at the law, at the written law, at mankind's written social laws, okay, or legal and like civil laws, if you take a look at them. If the law does not apply to everybody, from my observation, it creates a fracture. And you will end up developing a secondary culture inside the first one. Now, the problem with that is if the secondary culture does not develop equal laws that are equally affecting, equally applicable to every one of the people in their community, you will again get society fracturing. Now, with that in mind, take a look at the state the world is in. Okay, the number of different religions that have literally splintered off the main, the main or the primary mainstream religions. Religions have fractured. Communities have fractured. Families are at, at odds with each other. Because they are no longer following laws that apply to everybody in their community. Okay, and that is the thing we have to realize. But it's up to you to change that in your own world, in your in your own part of the world. Now, the major message I returned to give to you was that working together, every one of us, you know, with every one of us, every entity in existence, working together, we can make this a better world. We can eliminate the, we can eliminate war. We can eliminate famine. We can eliminate jealousy. Okay. Many of the laws that are written would become 
still written, but people will be following them naturally. Okay, and we can rewrite the laws to eliminate, to take ones off the books that are absolutely pointless. Okay, things like, for instance, okay, there's this neat little law, and I do encourage you to go and look up and look up on the internet. It used to be a lot harder. Now that the internet is out, look up on the internet the odd laws or the strange laws in your country. You will be amazed at some of the laws that are still on the books. Okay, one of the funnest ones I came across was one in Canada that said it is illegal to board an aircraft while in flight. Okay. Now, with that in mind, okay, that's one of those laws you look at going, why would you have to make that a law? Okay, it's just kind of an odd setup, but that's why I said you look up odd laws or strange laws in your country or in your state or in your province or whatever. Okay, if the laws are going to hold, they have to apply to everybody. Okay, if they do not apply to everybody, society will fracture. So, here's what I've been doing. Here's what I'm looking at. Now, I walked through it yesterday with getting this one set of shelves up here, sorted around. And on the plus side, it is sorted around. Okay, now it's a question of getting everything else moving. Okay, now, the, the reality of it is this. This is being done for me, because here's the reality. That in the backbone of a, of a house, there, there's two areas in anybody's home, anybody's office complex, that are, well, office complex, not so much. Anybody's home, you have two main rooms. The washroom is one of the most commonly used. The second most commonly used is the kitchen. Okay. But where it comes to running a household, the most the most important room in the house that you've got to get the energy straightened out smoothly for is the office. Okay. Now, when I was working, when I was looking at, I'm looking at my, my office right now. And I've got a bunch of things that I've got to get straightened out. So here's the funny little story we're going to start with. Right now... My world, much like your world in all likelihood, is not running exactly the way I desire it to. Now, I cannot control what other people are doing. Okay, I can put, uh, say, have my say. I can say this is what I think should be done. But I cannot make anybody do it. Okay, Lord knows if I can make people do what, what I know is required to make this world a better world. Lord knows. There would be a lot less conflict. So I know that sounds really egocentric. But think of it this way. One of the things that I know is necessary is for people to realize that regardless of what religion you follow, what what rituals you use in the way of you know of worshiping, of, of attuning to your higher power, regardless of what they are, if we accept everybody as is. Okay, and realize those three karmic laws. Be true to yourself. Do unto others as you desire them to do unto you. Energy out, energy in. If we follow, if we utilize that guideline, and we realize that regardless of the, of the religious practices, then we will not have as many conflicts in the way of religion. Now, the funny thing about it is... I, there was a, a question that was asked the other day on Spaced Out Radio during my during my visit there. On the first Friday of every month, I'm on Spaced Out Radio talking about aliens and alien technologies. And there was a question posed, has ufology, which is what that group is called, and what that belief structure is, has ufology become a sort of religion? And oddly enough, it has a lot of similar markings. But it's not a question of it being people worshipping. It's a belief structure that people follow. And as is, has been said multiple times, for those of you that believe, no proof is necessary. For those of you that don't believe, 
proof is almost impossible. Okay. Until you have an experience yourself. Now, the same applies to the way that your, that your office works. You don't have to believe that straighten your, straightening your office out, okay, will do anything to the energy in it. If you believe it will, then we're going to walk through it, follow the steps, and we'll make that happen. If you don't believe it, well, I cannot prove it to you. I can talk until I'm blue in the face, which is an odd saying, but... Okay, but until you experience it yourself, you're not going to be able to believe, you're not going to have anything f functional to work with. Aside from listening to my conviction on the fact that I see that it works for me. Okay, now I can tell you, many people I've talked to have said it won't work. They've turned around and done it, straightened out the office, and found out the energy worked well. Same as if you're, if you're not sleeping well, the first recommendation is uncluttering your bedroom. Okay, you'll find when you get the energy un uncluttered there, things will work out a lot better. Don't mind me, I was looking for them, and there it is, right in front of my eyes. Anyway, you don't have to believe me, but here's the thing. If you don't believe me, that's okay. But if you haven't given it a shot, take the time to organize even your desk, you know, even the working desk itself, and decide whether or not that made it easier. In other words, is it easier to work on a cluttered desk where you've got all kinds of stuff on it, or is it easier to clear the desk off and then work on a flat surface? Now, the logic is pretty cut and dry, but you don't have to believe me. Test it yourself. Okay, so what I'm looking at is this. Right now, I'm getting this done. Uh, like, I'm, I'm doing this recording, and this is a live recording, meaning as soon as I'm done recording it, then I will post it. Okay, I will double check. Make sure I got the date right. And then I will post it. Okay. I do not edit anything out of it. If I screw up on the date, then I will go back and re-edit it. Uh, or not re-edit it. I will go back and redo the whole thing all over again. And, you know, so you'll find all the hiccups, all the glitches, all the quirks. They'll all be there. Okay. As long as I get the date right, it gets posted as is. Okay. But while I am doing that, I'm working out what else has to be dealt with. Okay. Now, again, you don't have to believe me. But where it comes to following a guy, like, I have, I have claimed, I have absolutely claimed the title of spiritual guide. I'm not the only one out there. But something to consider. If you're following a spiritual guide that is telling you that treating other people less than you is a good thing, you might want to look at a different spiritual guide. If they're telling you that guns will help bring security to your life, you may want to watch it and follow somebody else. If they are telling you that enslaving other people to do your work, okay, if you, you know, that other people giving them, giving money, like if they're saying, you know, money is a bad thing. Give me all of your of of your belongings, okay? Because it's evil, and I will deal with it. If that is part of the line that they are using for you, you might choose to follow a different spiritual guide. Because I will tell you, from my standpoint, it's simple. I will not tell you who your friends are. I will not tell you, give me all your money because money is bad. First of all, money is an evil. Okay, what people do with things, kind of like guns. Guns are not evil. Guns, if you leave them alone, don't do a whole lot. It's kind of like a car. If you leave it alone, it won't do anything. But you put the wrong person behind the wheel of a car, and you've got somebody driving a 2,000-pound-plus weapon in the wrong hands with the wrong person behind the wheel, people are going to get hurt. With 
guns in the wrong hands, in the hands of the wrong people, people are going to get shot. This is not a problem with the gun. With money in the wrong hands, money will get spent and people will get hurt. Okay, usually money being spent in the wrong way means somebody gets neglected. Okay, so these are all things that if they, if they are yours or if you feel you deserve to have them, absolutely do. Now, do I actually own a gun? No, I fired one gun in my life. Of course, in all fairness, I've only fired two crossbows. Lost count of the number of bows, but the reality of it is this. If you have a gun, absolutely, from my standpoint, put the thing where it's safe. Don't go swinging around and pointing it at people. Okay, that's just not, not kosher. Remember, do unto others as you desire them to do, and to do unto you. So if you don't want a gun pointed at you, don't point a gun at somebody else. The reality is this. It doesn't guarantee that somebody won't do something stupid to you. But it does stack the deck in your favor. Okay. Now for me, okay, I look at it this way. Your belongings are your belongings. I absolutely encourage you to find a group of people that you can that you can draw around you. Very necessary, very beneficial. For me personally, I have chosen to withdraw from a lot of people from a so, from the social standpoint. Essentially, I've locked myself in my apartment. Okay, I will leave the apartment when I have to, and that's pretty much it. But I found out today I went out, and I found out going out even a little drives my nerves right through the roof. So I figure, I don't leave the apartment. I've got food in my house for the next two or three months without any problem. Therefore, I don't have anywhere I have to go. So I'm just not, in all fairness. From my standpoint, if I don't have to go outside of the house, at this point, I'm actually looking at the other option. I will be looking into, over the next couple of days, how to get groceries ordered in so I don't have to leave the house. Gives you an idea how I'm dealing with things. Which, by the way, is not necessarily a good thing. Okay. But, I'm altering the energy in my life. I'm isolating everything I can so that I can deal with me and with the way my house is working. And that's it. Okay, so I will be clearing out all of this stuff right about now. It boils down to figuring out what works for me. Same as you, with you sitting in the, with you sitting in your office right where you are, or you're sitting on a park bench watching this on a cell phone. Okay, you're still dealing with the same thing. Right here, right now, is when you have the opportunity to change the way your world is going. Okay, now, that said, the, the little story I'm working on, and realistically, over the next couple of days, okay, this is where I'm going to be focusing. I've already got my, my painting station done. I've got my, uh, my workstation here done. These shelves are all sorted out. We did those yesterday on video. So my working station here will be done. Next thing I will be working on is I'll be looking at this shelf up on top, of, up on top here. It's starting to clear this stuff out of the way. So that what I'm looking at between that shelf up there and these shelves over here, I'll be going through and sorting them out so that I know what I'm working with. Now, will I be just moving it somewhere else in the house? Technically, I could. But the stuff that is garbage will be going. The stuff I no longer have a use for will be shipped out. Okay. The stuff that is usable will be put where it belongs. So, this is just a commitment that I'm making to myself. And it's simply for me. Okay. For you, I do encourage you to do exactly the same thing. Decide what you're not content with and start altering it. Okay, one of the big things I'll be working on today. I wonder if I've actually got it up here. I hit that little button there. Yeah, I've got a bunch of them up. That is book 12, book 10, and that information. So, I've got two books already up and running that I will be working on today. Okay, this is going to be ongoing information that I have to deal with. Okay, 
And it's the same with you. You don't have to be doing a video, but I'm sure you've got more than one thing on the go. But like I said, the the reality is a list will help keep you keeping and will help you keep things organized. Now, the re the reality behind it all is that in order for your life to get in track, you're the one that's going to have to change the direction it's going. It's just that simple. Okay. If you don't make the adjustments, then you're not going to be able to correct it. So I'm just, whoops, where are we here? While I'm sitting here, I'm just thinking that there's a couple of things I really want to deal with as soon as I get this posted. And that's why I've got this here. Just clearing off a couple of things that are absolutely necessary. At this point, the one thing I'm, now you can't see it, but right, under, right underneath the sign that says, I am worth it, is a tabletop counter, uh, calendar. Okay, I am still very much a dinosaur. So that is the first thing I'm going to be clearing. Then I'm going to be clearing the floor. Now, I'm not about to try and show you that. There's not much there that doesn't belong there. Okay. But there is stuff that needs to go and that has to go on to a different shelf to get the energy running smoothly. And this is just one step at a time. Okay. And I do feel, especially if I get done what I'm what I'm aiming for today, where it comes to the writing side, that I will I will likely come into that side of it tomorrow. That's sort of tentatively where it is. Okay, but it depends on how far I get. In the meantime, now is the time we can sit back and postpone and procrastinate until the end of time. Okay, but when you get around to altering the energy in your life and smoothing it out to take the to alter the path that the negative energy is traveling in your life and alter it so that you're removing the negative and simply focusing on the positive. When you do that, you'll find your life runs a lot more smoothly. Now, on that note, I'm going to bring this to a close because I keep these to a half hour, to a roughly a half hour length. Okay, I will be back again tomorrow. But until then, take care of yourselves and each other. And for pity's sakes, stay positive.